All right, you can open your Bibles and notebooks. We want to get straight into God's Word. Of course, we're busy on, in a series. If you missed it or you knew, we're busy with a series on uh, the armor of God. I hope you've been enjoying it as much as I have. Uh, I just realized in the 20 years of ministry, I've never preached on the armor of God. Can you believe it? I, d- I don't know why. I just, I just never have. It's something I've just kind of taken for granted until recently God started stirring my heart. And I'm telling you, I've enjoyed it so much and I've learned so much. So, you know, I've, I've seen stuff that, that I've just, I've never seen before, you know. And so I hope you're getting something out of it because I've been getting a lot out of it. All right. So we're going to look at the, the third part to the series uh, this, this morning. Now, I don't know if you've ever shown up somewhere dressed the wrong way. <laughs> maybe, uh, maybe friends told you it was a fancy dress and you got there and it wasn't. That's bad. That's blind. Or maybe you rocked up somewhere completely underdressed. It happened to me once. I was officiating a wedding somewhere and Liesl and I drove out and it was quite a drive. And when I got there and opened the back door to get my jacket out, my, my suit jacket, there was no jacket. I'm telling you, I, I, I didn't know what to do. It was, it was, I felt naked. You know, you go to a wedding or a funeral without a jacket. Look, if it's a wedding on the beach where the, where the bride and groom are, are barefoot and, 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 and the groom is in, in chinos and stuff like that, you can pull it off, no problem. Take your tie off and roll up your sleeves and stuff, no problem. But this wasn't one of those weddings. <laughs> this was... One of the fancy ones. I, I have another word for those. The over-the-top ones. And the fathers who pay for them, you know what I'm talking about. All right, those, those are the ones where you have ten bridesmaids lined up. And they, they pick them from a fashion magazine somewhere, models. And then you have, you have ten best men on this side. It was one of those weddings. And, and the pastor's standing there doesn't even have a jacket on. I felt terrible, felt terrible. Now, there's a dress code for everything in life. You don't go hunting the same way as you go to a wedding. You don't go for a job interview the same way as you, as you go to the beach, all right? There's a, there's a dress code for these things. The Apostle Paul gives us a dress code for battle in Ephesians chapter 6. But now, before we get there, let me just quickly say to you, our, our job here and our purpose here is not to try and defeat the enemy. I want you to hear that. Because he's already been defeated at Calvary. All right? Our job as Christians is just to stand against him. Not to run from him. Not to try and fight him and engage him. But to stand, to resist. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, put on all of God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. Another translation says, so that you will be able to resist. James 4 verse 7 says, resist the enemy. (laughs) And there's some good news that follows. And he will flee. Why? Because he's already defeated. And he knows that. But Christians often don't know that. And so he comes and he tries to bully and he tries to intimidate and he tries to lie. And if you and I don't know that he's already been defeated, he catches us and he messes with us. And so that's why we've got to know who we are and what we are in Christ and we've got to be able to stand firm. And the Bible says if we stand, if we resist, he will flee. Now how do we do that? And that's what we've been looking at in in this series. How do we stand? How do we resist the enemy? Let's go back to Scripture. And I read from from verse 13, Ephesians 6, 13. Therefore put on the full armor of God, so that when the day of evil comes, you could even say, when the evil one comes. That's the day when he tempts. That's the day when he tries to mess up your life. You may be able to stand your ground And after you've done everything to stand, stand firm then with a belt of truth buckled around your waist, with a breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet, this is the next one, we're looking at this today, and with your feet fitted 
with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. Another translation says, the shoes of peace. The New Living Translation, the shoes of peace. Verse 16, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Now, we've already covered two parts of the armor. We've already looked at the belt of truth and the breastplate of righteousness. This morning, I want to have a look at the shoes of peace. Now, I wasn't going to spend much time on it because we've just done a series on peace. Just, just recently now, we've spent some time on peace. And so all I wanted to do this morning is, is just touch on peace and, and, and move on because we've covered that. But it's almost as if God wouldn't let me. And every time I sit down to prepare, it's as if God brings me back to the shoes of peace. And so we're going we're gonna to look at the shoes of peace this morning. But we're going to look at it from a very different angle to what we did a couple of weeks ago. All right, so let's go back to verse 15. It says, for shoes, for shoes, put on the peace that comes from the good news so that you will be fully prepared. Now, if there's one thing that I've learned about peace is that you and I have got to hold on to it. Remember, You've, you, it's your responsibility and my responsibility to hold on to our peace. What does Moses say to the children of Israel in Exodus 14, 14? He says, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. He says, God's going to fight and God's going to help and God's going to come through. But you shall hold your peace. Why? Because there will be things that will try and take your peace. And it may be problems. And it may be people. Or people are your problem. I don't know. And, and maybe it may be pressure, where you just you facing you facing pressure at work, and there's financial pressure, and, and, and that pressure wants to take your peace. It it may be politics at the office, it may be politics in the in the in, in, in the family, it it may be politicians. You look at what's happening in the government, you look at what they're doing or not doing. And for some people, that's taking their peace. They can't have peace because of that. But what I want to point out today, there will always be a P that will try and take your peace. All right? So what the enemy wants to do is he wants to substitute peace with problems or pressure or politics or people or something like that. But there will always be something like that. And he will do whatever he can to try and take your peace. Why? Because if he can take your peace, he takes your shoes of peace. And you won't be able to stand in the battle. You can have the sword of the Spirit, and you can have the shield of faith, and if you barefoot, you're going to be walking and saying, ooh, ah, 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 and you're going to be doing the holy dance <laughs> rather than standing. And the Bible calls us to stand and to stand again. That's what we're told to do, not to be dancing around. And so we've got, to have, we've got to have our shoes of peace on. Now, this morning we're going to look at three main areas that we need to have peace. And so for those of you taking notes, I'm going to give you three main areas. Here they are. Peace with God. Peace with others. And peace with self. In Matthew chapter 22, Jesus says, He says, Love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. I've underlined those for you. Love God. Love neighbor. Love self. Peace with God. Peace with neighbor. Peace with self. And if the enemy can take any one of those three, He's taken your peace. All he's got to do is take one of those. And what I want you to do this morning, you know, this is what I typically do. If we have three things, choose one. Because you may have peace with God, but you don't have peace with neighbor. Or peace with others. You may have peace with others, but you don't have peace with yourself. I want you this morning, to you don't do all three. I want you to identify one. Which is your one? That's all we're going to do today. 
We're going to look at one. Peace with God. Peace with neighbor. Peace with self. If the enemy can take one of those, he takes your peace. And maybe you've, you've, there's been, there, there was a time in your life where you didn't have peace in yourself. You were just unhappy. You were just miserable. You were just not comfortable in your own skin. <laughs> And you know what that feels like. You wake up in the morning and you're just not happy within. And so guess what happens? That unhappiness spreads to have unhappiness without. And and, and it starts rubbing off on everybody else. Because there's no peace with self. Maybe there was a time in your life where you didn't have peace with God. You go to bed at night. You put your head on the pillow. and, And you just know things between you and God aren't right. And if you don't wake up tomorrow morning, you're going you're gonna to wake up in a place you don't want to wake up in. If tomorrow morning a truck skips the traffic light and you're in the wrong place, you're going to be spending eternity in the wrong place. What's that called? That's, that, that's when we don't have peace with, with God. And, and maybe you're sitting here this morning, or maybe you're listening to this on the internet, and, and you don't have peace with God. Because you haven't surrendered your life to God. Or maybe you haven't become born again. And, and if that's you, I just want to say to you today, God wants to give you an opportunity to have peace with Him today. And you can walk out of this building completely different. And God wants to forgive your sins. And He wants to give you the assurance that if you had to die, you would go to heaven just like that. God wants to give you that. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even after dying. You know what he's saying? He says, there's life after death. He says, and all you've got to do is you've got to believe in me. You've got to surrender your life to me. You've got to become, we call it, born again. He says, and you, you do that, you will live even after dying. You know, Ecclesiastes 3 verse 2 says, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. For every single one of us. We know the time that we were born. We don't know what time we're going to die. And it doesn't matter how much you're enjoying this life. And it doesn't matter how much you focused on this life. And it doesn't matter how much you've accumulated in this life. There's a time that you're going to die. And I'm going to die. And we've got to make sure that we're ready for that time. Whenever it comes, I know I'm fine because I've got peace with God. A lady said to me once, she said, but, but I hate the very thought of, of hell. I just, I, I hate that. I, I hate the, the thought of people going to, to, to hell. Well, so do I. So do I. I. I hate war. And I hate famine. And I hate poverty. Because I think it's from, it's from the enemy. And, and I hate people being treated unfairly. But my hating of that is not going to change any of that until I do something about it. And so what do we do about about hell? Because as much as we hate that and hate the thought of that, what do we do about it? The only thing that you and I can do about hell is to make sure we don't go there. How do we do that? We've got to surrender our lives to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the moment we do that, we have peace with Him. Philippians 4, 7, Paul says, he says, His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Where does that peace come from? Living in Christ Jesus. In other words, being born again. So he says, you want to have peace with God? The only way is to be born again, to surrender your life to to Jesus. All right, let's move on. So we've looked at peace with God. Now let's have a look at peace with people. Oh, Lennon, this this is a different story. I think it's easier to have peace with God than to have peace with people. (laughs) I don't know if we've got enough time for this topic this morning. We can spend spend a series on this topic, peace with, with people. Do you know, Jesus addressed this topic once. It's crazy. And so he addresses this whole thing about how to have peace with, with people. And it, the stuff he said messed with the minds of his listeners. And it's still messing with us today. 
because his words are still echoing today. How? Through the pages of this Bible. So listen to what Jesus said. And it's going to mess with you. I'm just warning you. But I tell you who hear me, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. And that's not praying like, oh God, you know, bless them with a, with a brick or something. It's, no, it's not that kind of prayer. All right. If somebody strikes you on one cheek, turn to him the other also. If someone takes your cloak, do not stop him from taking your tunic. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Do to others as you would have them do to you. We know that is the golden rule. Do to others as you would have them do to you. And I'm sure you're sitting here and you're listening and it's messing with your mind. And you're saying, Leonard, that's crazy. Who does that? Can I tell you who put that thought in your mind now as I'm busy, as I'm busy reading this there's something that's pushing back that's saying, how? That's crazy. That, that can't work. Do you know who put that thought in your mind? The devil. Right here in church. The devil. Because Jesus is saying to us, he says, he says, love your enemy. And the devil is coming and he's saying, that's crazy. That's not possible. You, you, you can't do that. You see what he does? The enemy tells us to do exactly the opposite of what Jesus tells us to do. And so Jesus basically comes. This is what he's doing. I want you to get this. And he says, I want you to take the high road. What is the high road? The high road is doing the right thing when you don't feel like it. When, 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 it's just, when nobody else is doing that. He says, I want you to take the high road. The high road is the difficult one. It's the one that nobody does that. He says, I want you to do that. The low road, that's the easy one out. You just drop to their level. You just, you just seek revenge. If they've hurt you or done you in, I, I just, I, I'm going to get you back. You just wait and see. We drop to their level. The high road is completely different. And God is saying to you and me, Jesus is saying, yeah, uh, you want peace with others. You want peace with others. You want peace in your home or in your workplace or with those neighbors. Take the high road. Take the high road. And the enemy is saying, that's crazy. That's crazy. And then Jesus says, if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. And if you lend to those from who you expect repayment, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners expecting to be repaid in full. So notice how he uses the word sinners. He's just saying, he's saying even the unsaved, even the pagans, even those who don't know God, they're good to those who are good to them. They love those who love them. They're kind to those who are kind to them. So if you treat me well, I'll, I'll treat you well. He says, man, even the unsaved does that. He says, but you are not like that. And so what he's saying is, I want you to be different. That's what Jesus is saying. I want you to be different. He says, I want you to take the high road. And then he shows us how. In verse 35, he says, love your enemies. He says it again. Do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great and you will be sons of the Most High because He, because He is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. And so what Jesus is saying here, He says, I want you to be kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Because God is kind to them. I want you to do the same. The, the, to, to those who, who don't come and say thank you. And they just, they just ungrateful. He says, I want you to be kind to them. He says, I want you to go the extra mile for them. 
And those who've hurt you, I want, to, I want you to forgive them. And I want you to go the extra mile. I want you to take the high road. And every time Jesus says that, the enemy will whisper to you and me, that's crazy. That will be the day. Can you see what's busy happening? There's a battle busy going on, even right now as I speak. God is saying, I want you to do this. And the enemy is saying, that's crazy. Don't even, maybe with so and so, but these people that have hurt you, <laughs> forget it. There's a battle going on. What is he doing? He's taking your peace. He's taking your shoes of peace. And you can have the sword, and you can have the shield, and you can have the helmet, and you can have the breastplate. But if, if you're doing the dance, you're not going to be able to stand because you don't have shoes of peace. Maybe you're sitting here this morning, you're saying, oh, Leonard, I don't know what the problem is. I don't have any difficult people in my life. You know, I've, I've only got lovely people, loving people, kind people. Well, bless you. For the rest of us, <laughs> we've got all those mean people who are not in your life, they're in my life. <laughs> now listen, if you've ever had some of those difficult people in your life, you will know that there's, that there's always at least one thing that you just wish they would change. And you look at them and you think, man, if they could just be a little bit more considerate. If they could just be a little bit less opinionated, a little bit less bossy, you know, if they could just be a little bit less critical, a little bit less demanding, if, if they would just make a little bit of an effort in that area, if they would just change in that one area, oh, they would be so much better people. And everybody would love them. They would be so nice. <laughs> Here's the bad news. You can't change them. Even if it's one little thing. But here is something that may trigger change in them. You say, what? When you start changing. You see, when you and I start changing, it may, no guarantee, but it may trigger change in them. My change may trigger their change. All right? And so when you start treating them better, there's a chance that they'll treat you better. When, when, when you start being more positive about them and here and there just encouraging them, there's a chance that they may be a little bit more positive about you. You see, the Bible says in Proverbs 15, 4, gentle words bring life and health. Not, not, not arguments, not fighting. Gentle words bring life and health. When, when, you, when you go to somebody and you say to, to them, man, I really appreciate what you did over there. I've, I've noticed you're really good at that. It's just amazing. You're gifted in that area. You'll be amazed what a few kind words can do to somebody. I think one of the easiest ways to flip an enemy is through kindness. That's why the Bible says it's the goodness of God that draws people to repentance. Even God uses kindness. Even God uses kindness. And so you've got people in your life that you're battling with. Take the high road. Use a little bit of kindness. All right. Let's move on. So we've looked at peace with God. We've looked at peace with, with people. You need to decide which, which one was yours. If it was peace with people, you may leave now because I'm, we're going to do the last one. All right. And we're going to quickly look at peace with self. Peace with self. Have you ever attended a party or a wedding or a function where you didn't really want to go? Because you didn't really know the people, or you didn't really get along with the people, but you didn't have much of a choice, and so what happens, you you got to dig deep, and you got to go. And so, you know, and I know, it's a long evening. It's like walking through toffee. 
It's a making small talk all the time. We've been there, we've done that, all right? It, it's just, it's a long evening. Do you know it's the same in life when you don't like yourself, when you're not comfortable with yourself? In other words, you don't have peace with yourself. It's not a long evening. It's a long life, all right? Because everywhere you go, there you are. <laughs> you wake up in the morning, there you are again. You walk into the bathroom and you take your, your toothpaste and toothbrush and stuff. You look in the mirror and there you are again. <laughs> Think about it. You can't get away from yourself. Even for one little second. Listen, listen, listen. The most important relationship, the most important relationship you and I have is with the Lord Jesus Christ, our Heavenly Father. That's, that's the most important. Now, the second most important relationship is right here with self. Because everything else flows from our relationship with self. That's why Jesus says, love your neighbor as you love yourself. If you cannot love yourself, you're not going to be able to really love your neighbor, your wife, your colleagues, whoever around you, your children, because you're battling in the inside. You're going to battle. It's going to be a strain. If you don't have peace here, you're not going to have peace there. Everything else, everything else flows from this relationship deep down on the inside. Can we pause here for just a moment? How do you feel about yourself? How do you see yourself? Or, or here's a telling one. How do you think others see you? Because that's very often a reflection of how you see yourself. You think they see you. How do you think others see you? You see, for some people, when they think of themselves, they constantly negative and critical, and they look at themselves and they think, well, you know, I'm okay, but I'm not as good as so-and-so, and I'm not as talented as, as this one, and I'm not as good-looking, and I'm not as popular, and I'm not as smart, and what are they doing? They're constantly putting themselves down. You know what I found? It's just as easy to be positive about yourself as it is to be negative. It's just as easy to be positive about yourself than it is to be negative. Now, I'm not saying that you need to overlook nonsense in your life because you want to be positive about yourself. No, 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 no. The Bible says, let each man examine himself. There's a time to look at yourself and to say, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have done that. This was, this was crazy. And to learn from that and to grow out of that and to make progress. There's, there's a time and a place, but don't get stuck in the failure and the mistakes and the stuff that you've done wrong. Don't get stuck in that. There's some people still busy. They're still busy asking God for forgiveness for stuff that they did three, four, five years ago. Uh, they've asked God a hundred times for forgiveness. What did we say last week? God forgave you the very first time you asked. It's time to forgive yourself and to move on. The Apostle Paul says, he says, I'm still not all I should be, but I'm focusing all my energies on this one thing. He says, on this one thing, what is it? Forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. He says, man, I let the past be in the past. The mistakes and the failures and the, even the successes, I let it be. I'm moving forward. I'm, I'm going ahead. I want to say to you this morning, there's no place in your future for your past. There's no place in your future for your past. Let it be. Learn from it. Grow through it. And let it be. Now let me end off with this last illustration quickly. I have 200 rand note. People in the front row, you can relax. I'm not giving it away this time. All right. I'm seeing people putting notebooks down already. <laughs> Babes, hold this. We're going to get this this time. And I missed it last time. This time's mine. The Reserve Bank 
says this is a 200 rand note. They've designed this, and they've printed it. And so they've, they've pinned its value at 200 rand. Now, imagine if this, if this uh, note comes off the printing press, and within a couple of days, somehow, it goes through the hands of a, of a drug dealer. And then a couple of days later, it finds itself in the hands of a prostitute. And then a couple of days after that, somehow in the hands of a, of a, of a, of a, of a car thief or some, something like that. And then somehow, somehow, a couple of weeks later, it finds itself in one of the boxes. Yet Maranatha, part of the offering. I have one question for you. Now what is the value of this? 200 rand. Doesn't matter where it's been. Doesn't matter what it's gone through. The creator of this note says the value of this note, 200 rand. I want to say to you this morning, doesn't matter where you've been. Doesn't matter what you've done. Doesn't matter who said what about you. Doesn't matter what the enemy has said about you. Doesn't matter what you've thought about yourself. Doesn't change your value. You are so valuable that Almighty God sent heaven's best to die for you. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ. That's how valuable you are. And people have lied and the devil has, has lied. And you've got to come back and you've got to say, no. I'm, I'm valuable, and I'm precious, and that's how God sees me. Listen, friends, God never created us to be against ourselves, to run ourselves down, and to be critical and negative about ourselves. That's the enemy's job. God's for you. He loves you, and He's got a great plan for your life. Doesn't matter where you've been. Doesn't matter what you've done. He says, I've still got a great plan for your life, and I still know how to get you there. I can still do that in your life. He says, don't look at your age. I can still get you there. That's what God wants. The enemy, he's whispering, whispering to you right now. Yeah, but I don't know if it's for you. And so what does he want to do? He wants to limit your life. And, and he wants to somehow try and stifle your spiritual growth, put you down. And he wants to minimize your, your, your effectiveness and your influence and your success. He wants to take all of those things away from you. And the way he does it is not to get a truck to drive you over. He just takes your peace. That's all he does. Peace with God. Peace with other people. Suddenly you're just in conflict and you're just fighting and you're just, because you refuse to take the high road. Or he says, peace with self. I want you to look down upon yourself. And I want you to be critical about yourself. I want, and, 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 and you're not good enough. And everybody is better than you. And you'll never make it. And the moment he takes your peace, in, in any one of those areas, he only has to take one, you suddenly don't have shoes of peace on anymore. And you've got all the other armor. But you can't stand. You can't stand. That's why Scripture tells us, Hold your peace. Hold your peace, Maranatha. Is it peace with God? The pastor is available in the front straight after the service as they are every single service. And if you need to surrender your life to Jesus this morning, we would love to pray with you. You're going to walk out with peace. And if it's peace with other people, take the high road. Take the high road. Let, let it go. So what? So what? Let it go. And the enemy is going to say to you, Yeah, but don't listen to the enemy. Listen to God. Take the high road. And if it's, if it's peace with self, remember that 200 rand note. Just remember that. I want to pray for us this morning. Let's stand and bow our heads before the Lord. Let's bow. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for bringing us here this morning. And for those of us who have surrendered our lives to you, and we do have peace with you, 
Hallelujah. It's amazing. It's just great. Thank you, Jesus, that we belong to you. Thank you that we are part of your family. And God, I pray for all of us that we will, we will walk in peace with others. That we will, we will hold on to that because the enemy is constantly trying to take our peace. To get us uh, uh, upset and offended and frustrated. And so easy to give in to that. We refuse to. We're going to take the high road. We're going to make room for people. And for some of those here this morning that have been listening to the lies of the devil. And he's been lying to them and lying to them and putting them down. And they're not good enough and they failed too many times. God, I pray that they will leave this building this morning seeing their value, not seeing the past, not seeing the mistakes, forgetting what lies behind and straining toward what lies ahead, a life with Jesus. And so that's what we trust you for, Lord. Bless this week and make us a blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. Bless you.